Brain Food, Random Stimulation for the Brain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build these amazingly powerful two inch match head rockets. I fine tuned the design to achieve a flight distance of over 60 feet and a single match head rocket that can be made in only 60 seconds. Not only that, but they're easy to build, store, unnervingly accurate, and launch reliably time after time with a very satisfying pop. And you can do all this with standard household items that you can wander into the kitchen and pick up right now. I've got good memories of using the power of a match to make rockets like this as a child. So I thought it might be fun to see how far I can tweak the design for maximum distance and power now I'm older. I tried lots of different things, different kitchen foils, various brands of matches, lots of design and weight tweaks, and many types of launch rod until I got a reliable, easy to follow system that flew up to a massive 60 feet, all with a single match head like this one. Pretty much any type of match will do, but I had the most consistent results and longest range with the Strike Anywhere matches as against the Strike on box only variety. The first thing we need to do is harvest some match heads for our rocket engine. That's done by simply cutting away the unwanted wooden part of the match, close enough to the tip so that we're not carrying unnecessary weight Weight, but not so close that the match head breaks up. Next we're going to make the rocket body out of some kitchen foil. Any kitchen foil will do but if you have some slightly better quality thicker foil it will help with the flight distances. This is because thicker foil resists blowout when the high pressures we will be creating inside our mini rocket can punch through the side of the foil. Now pull about 5 inches of foil out and cut it off. Here is the template I'll be using to mark onto the foil and it comes printed to scale size on my plan sheet which is a 100% free download on the website. I'll make the links available at the end of the video and in the iCards and description bar if you want one. This stage is optional but I would recommend that you cut a small slither of paper or tissue. We can then place it on top of the kitchen foil like this. Fold it once to make sure that the template fits nicely inside the edges of the fold and set it to one side. Now fold the foil over as many times as you can and this way we should be able to make four rocket casings in one go. Now place the template on top of the foil and gently mark around the shape with a pen or marker ready for cutting out. After cutting around the shape, it should be easy to separate the layers because of the paper we placed in earlier. The paper isn't necessary, but depending on your foil and scissors, it may make life one heck of a lot easier. Finally, we need a launching rod and this doubles up as a rolling stick. You could use a wooden barbecue skewer or a cocktail stick, but I found the best to be this simple metal skewer or a straight wire coat hanger. And these can be used again and again with no performance loss or variations as long as you keep them clean. By marking 4 inch sections down the skewer, not only do you end up with 3 virtually indestructible long life launch rods, but as a handy bonus, we've even got a thumb holder on one that we can use later on. Then just cut free with a pair of pliers or a saw. The last stage of finishing, we just need to knock off any sharp burrs that may rip or catch the kitchen foil. If you have a file to hand, it's a simple matter of removing any sharp edges and beveling the top and the sides. If you don't have a file, you can do exactly the same thing with a sandpaper or a concrete paving slab. Now that's out of the way, we have all the components we need to quickly roll multiple long range mini rockets. Take one of your match head motors and place it with the top of the match head facing the bottom of your rocket casing with about 10 millimeters or 3 8 of an inch of foil above it. By gently forming a U-shape in the foil with your fingers, you can create somewhere for the launch rod and match head to sit. So slide that up to the match head and into position. Now start rolling the foil up and once you have the first one or two rotations in place, place one small fold near the tip like this. Then roll up nice and tight. It may not look much, but what that simple little fold does is help to trap in some of the very high pressures that are created on launch. Once you have a nice roll all the way to the top, twist the spare foil above the match head in the same direction as the roll. And with a little bit of practice, you can do all this in less than 45 seconds. Finally, take some pliers and crimp over the top third of the spare foil. Fold that over again, crimp once more, and fold that into the last third, then crimp again. Be careful at this stage not to crimp too close to the match head so that you might accidentally crush it or weaken the foil near it. 
With a few light adjustments, you will now have your rocket complete in less than 60 seconds and ready to fly. What we've created here, without doing anything else, is basically replicate the aerodynamic principles of a foam gun dart like Nerf. In our rocket, the mass created by the excess foil and match head are at the tip. The rocket body should be as smooth as possible and not bent, and once that's right, there's just no need for fins at the rear. If you do want some fins though, it couldn't be easier. Cut a small square of tape, then punch a hole in the middle. Slip the tape over the top of the casing and down to the base. Then a simple corner to corner fold on both corners completes the basic shape. Trim back any excess tape and you're good to go. These slight upward cuts to the underneath of the fins not only tidy things up but reduce unwanted drag. You can even reduce drag a bit more and fly further by an additional haircut to the tips. Before any launch takes place, make sure the rocket body is still tightly rolled but slides freely on the launch rod like this. You can go ahead and launch and you should get an easy 20 to 40 feet without much problem. For maximum distance though, there is one more tweak that we can make. By carefully pinching and twisting the joint between the launch rod and the head of the match, we create some extra pressure and a hint more friction just at this point. It may take a bit of practice, but when you get this right, it will take off with a very satisfying crack. By using an old magnet, I stuck the metal launch rod straight to the side, making the launch angle variable. And although the recoil robs some of the power, it looks cool. After burning the living room carpet with a hot rocket casing, I discovered you're better off launching these outside. And in windy conditions, try a barbecue lighter like this, or a chef's butane torch, where you might find that a nice slow heat will result in better launches. So don't get too close, or turn down the power of your blowtorch. So there you go, that's how to make a single match head rocket in 60 seconds that can fly up to 60 feet. I hope you had fun watching this video, so why not subscribe now for more videos that you might like in the future. And if you managed to beat my distance of 60 feet, let me know in the comments section below or post the results on my Facebook page where you can share photos and videos if you like. Well that's it for now, don't forget the free plans available on the website, thanks for watching.